Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're all well. Um, the, I've been like a lot better at making videos lately, like the last couple of months, but I know this one's a little bit behind. Um, I've just been like really busy with work. I've got 10, 10 days left, including today. Um, so it's just one of those things where I'm trying to catch up with everything, trying to make sure everything's finished and done, doing visits and stuff. So I've just been super, super busy. And obviously when I'm not at work, I just, you know, I just chill out and forget about things really. Um, I've been back into my fan fiction at the moment. Um, I don't know if people know what that is, but it's like a fan fiction website where you can write stories about certain programs and stuff like that. Um, I started doing it when I was like 11, so it's been a while and I just enjoy writing stories and things, even ones that I write on my computer and don't show anyone. I did publish a book in 2015, which is on Amazon. Um, it's called Smiling Through Recovery. I can put a link to it if anyone's interested, but I've you know I've grown a lot since then I've learned a lot since then things that obviously have happened since 2015 um when I wrote the book I didn't actually have a diagnosis of autism and obviously now I do I did start writing a book about my experiences with autism and things like that and I do need to get back into writing that which I'm hoping I can hang on Just for anyone that did want to see, uh, this is my book um, called Smiling Through Recovery and then it's got a little um, picture of me and my old dog Tia who passed away um, on the back of it and then like a sort of um, overview of the book really. But the print is like, um, it's bigger than what you'd find in a normal book um, just because I thought that would be helpful for people. Um, which just makes it a bit more accessible and my style of writing and my writing in general has improved a lot since I wrote this book and I would love to rewrite this book but I think I want to focus on um writing about my autism journey I think but anyway I'm waffling on about stuff that's not related to this video um so today's video is about disclosing your autism to someone telling someone you're autistic that could be family members friends um work friends it could be your manager um and when i did the post diagnostic course they actually had a session on um disclosing your autism to someone so that was um session five so there there are a lot of different reasons why you might want to tell someone that you're autistic so you know you can tell whoever you want to tell you don't have to tell anyone um but with me i find that i don't tell people i'm autistic like i wouldn't be like hi i'm savannah and i have autism but like if someone asks me do you know do you have autism or they'll like bring up something about autism i might say oh well i'm autistic and this this and this i don't put it out there unless it kind of comes up really and that's not because i'm ashamed of being autistic or uncomfortable with people knowing or anything like that i just don't know if it's appropriate for me to like be like i'm autistic f without any sort of contacts like, i don't know um uh, it depends who it is really obviously if i'm close friends with someone i'll say it like i'm not gonna you know i'll talk about it and whatnot um so like a couple of my family members know my mum was involved in the, my diagnostic assessment um she had like a separate four hour interview with a psychiatrist to talk about childhood and things like that so obviously she kind of knows what my struggles are and what autism is and things but i think with the older generations autism um is not really explain very well like i don't know if they have an accurate view of what autism actually is my grandparents know i'm autistic like you know close family know but i'm not really sure if they know what it is exactly like i've never actually spoken to them about about autism other than the fact that they know i have it so i don't know like when i got diagnosed i wasn't living at home anymore i think if i had been at, been still living at home it would have obviously been talked about a lot more and things would have been put in place and whatnot but because i've always been living 
not at home with the diagnos diagnosis. I sort of deal with everything and put things in place for myself and my part and my partner helps me with that. So in terms of family, that's what it's like with me. Um, co-workers, some co-workers know, some don't. Like in my old job, some people would actively talk with me about my autism and whatnot. And some people, that conversation never came up. I don't know if they knew I was autistic or not. It doesn't really matter. Um, I told my previous manager that I was autistic um, because they brought up that um, people in training had said that I wasn't concentrating, I wasn't paying attention and all this stuff and most of the problems I was having was at the time I thought was related to my autism but actually I think now it's more ADHD so um, on that on those bits that she brought up so that's why I disclosed it to her and I also had a meltdown um, and became non-verbal with an incident at work um like someone stopped one of the management stopped me from leaving when i had agreed to leave early and i was going to miss my train i had an absolute meltdown at the gate and went non-verbal so i think that kind of was like mm, something's going on here so i was like yeah i'm autistic um so i disclosed it there i didn't disclose it initially i think it was a couple of months until they actually knew in my current job i told them probably within like one or two weeks of starting um, I just did it over email and I just said, um, I just wanted to let you know that I have autism, I struggle with this, this and this, but um, I'm going to put 100% into my job and, you know, dedication and things like that. So I haven't really had negative responses to telling someone I'm autistic. Um, I, f I don't know, I don't know whether that's because people are afraid to actually say what they're thinking or whether they generally are just accepting of the fact that I have autism and we're in a changing world where that's seen quite a lot at the moment but I haven't really had negative things. I've had some people be like oh well, you don't look autistic or well everyone's a little bit autistic you know saying all these myths and things um, and that can get frustrating. I you know I don't really I might correct them it depends who the person is but I just kind of ignore it like but yeah so disclosing has pros and cons obviously it depends who you're disclosing it to it depends why you want to disclose it or you don't have to have a reason but you know you might weigh up the pros and cons of like that that person knowing so in terms of in the workplace you can tell someone you're autistic at the job interview um you could tell them before the job interview if you like on your application if you wanted um adjustments made for your interview like that like if you want stuff typed out instead of spoken to you like things like that you can have reasonable adjustments because autism falls into the disability like the equality act it classes as a disability in that sense so you are protected um you can disclose it when you get offered the job you could disclose it a couple of months down the line you could disclose it two years down the line like it depends you know you can disclose it anytime there's no sort of time limit on when um and the department for work and pensions do provide um like financial support in a job so they can give you um things to help you do your job better or give training to managers and stuff like that so that's worth looking into um, so the reasons for disclosing your autism to an employer is it helps them understand difficulties you have. It can help an employer make reasonable adjustments to help you and you can become eligible for support within the workplace. So the reasons that could go against disclosing it, you may have concerns about discrimination or rejection. You may feel that your condition doesn't affect the ability to do your job or you may feel that others treat you differently. So those pros and cons are kind of relatable to like anyone that you tell anyway um like it it could be you know you could be worried about what that person's going to say or react or do but it could also by telling them it's also helping them understand you and put things in place for you um and i don't think there is like a right or wrong way to tell someone like that's up to the person like you could send them an email you could text them you could tell them in person, like it could just come up in conversation. Like, um, I think with me, like because I've worked in like health and social care jobs, autism tends to come up in general conversation like multiple times a day. Not so much in my current job because I work in social services now, but when 
I worked in a residential home, it, the, the residential home was for children with disabilities and I'd say about 90% of the children there had autism. So obviously everyone was talking about autism all the time every day so it was kind of easy just to throw things in or give my thoughts on it and talk about autism in that sense whereas I think in some workplaces or with some certain friends or whatever if autism doesn't really come up casually I know it can be quite hard to sort of bring autism up so there's no right or wrong way to do it like it could simply be like I have autism or did you know I have autism or even if someone's talking about like fireworks or something like it's just you, you know it's easy to just be like oh I really struggle with the sound of fireworks because I have autism or because I'm autistic so I feel like, you know, in us, you know, this day and age, like people are a lot more accepting of disabilities like autism, hidden disabilities, you know, there's a lot of awareness on it now on social medias and platforms and things, but there is definitely still a lot of stigma. I know that a lot of people um, struggle to understand autism. Like if you, if you didn't have, you know, if someone said, oh, that person has autism, a lot of a lot of people think of you know the worst case scenario like you know putting everyone into that one idea one picture of what autism is and obviously everyone with autism is different like some people have said what level of autism are you or like are you, you well you're obviously high functioning or autistic um and it's like mm, i don't know it's these sort of misconceptions and like judgments going on and i don't know but in the uk i don't think they diagnose levels of autism i might be wrong but i've not come across that um but like i don't know i really don't like the low or high functioning labels um you can obviously look quite high functioning to some people um but that doesn't mean that the person's not struggling i don't know like i don't know if high functioning seem people tend to be like oh well you're obviously high functioning as if they're dismissing the fact that you struggle with anything um and it's a bit like i'm not really sure but obviously in terms of i think a lot of people will say high functioning in terms of not having an intellectual disability and i know a lot of people don't use it in a negative way but obviously we need to be mindful that people are going to think these things when telling them and you can just explain how you see your autism to the person what helps you what they can do to help you what if there's anything that doesn't help you and just kind of make it like a you know it doesn't have to be difficult to disclose autism to anyone family members friends work and you know like people if they don't if they're not accepting of it that's not your problem to worry about like that's obviously an issue on their their part so tips for disclosing your autism diagnosis there's no right or way wrong way to do it um do what you think's right at the time it's up to you who you disclose it to you don't have to disclose to anyone you don't want to disclose it to um if you disclose it you obviously can't take that back so think about who you're ex you know you're telling or if you want that person to know because obviously once you've told them that's it really try and be positive about it remember that for some people their only experience of autism may be you they may not know anyone else if you are negative about it others perception might be negative be informed keep learning if you understand your condition better it can help those around you to better understand you and support you tell people what you want so you can tell them how much you want people you know you can tell them as much as you want about your autism or you can tell them very little simply just being i have autism that's it you don't need to go into any more detail make sure that what you say is relevant they don't need to know every tiny little bit of your diagnosis if you don't don't want them to give them the main points of your diagnosis to help them understand and support you and don't rush to defend yourself your diagnosis is official and it's yours if someone doesn't believe it that's not your problem um and i also have this little booklet from the integrated autism service which is a guide for employers on how to make the workplace autism friendly and the benefits of having an autism an employer with autism so i can send pictures i guess of this to anyone if they want it by email um it's like what is autism it gives like a little rundown how to interview someone with autism 
making the workplace autism friendly, uh, benefits of having an autistic employee and top tips for employers. So that's quite handy if like you want to talk to your manager about your autism. Um, and if anyone wants any pictures of the information in this post-diagnostic handbook, I can try and send that by email as well. On the good news front, my Etsy shop is back up and running, so if anyone has any um, products or anything they want to see or any ideas, go check that out. At the moment I have a lot of sort of cards on there that people can customise, like um, communication cards, um, like diagnosis cards, like cards that they can give to people to help if they're having meltdowns and things, um, and some key rings and stuff, but I'm hoping to extend that soon. And I also wanted to show you some sensory stuff I bought in Tesco in the UK. Um, I literally just picked them up. So they they were called, like on the tag, they were sensory bowls. So I was like, hmm, I'll have a look. So I had a look in the basket and they had loads of different ones. So this one has animals on it. And it's got like bells inside. So that's that one. And then this one has animals and stuff on it, but with like letters and numbers. And this one has tiny little beads inside. Um, they had like a couple of others. They had one with like little shiny glitter um, things in. And then one with like streamers in, but they were like silent. Like they didn't make a noise. They're probably quite vis like visual. Um, but I like things that make a noise. So these were the only two that did that. So I got these. But um... I hope everyone's hanging in there and doing okay. Lockdown is lifted in the UK now. Um, Wales has just joined England in terms of Freedom Day. Um, a lot of places are still recommending you wear masks and things, but it's not man, it's not law anymore. There's no limits on how many people can meet up and those sort of things. But yeah i hope everyone's doing okay and you're having a good day if you have any video requests please pop them down below and i'll see you soon bye guys